Well, okay. hi, good Woo. evening, everyone. We want to welcome hi. you to this week's Confident <laughs> Woman Workshop. We want to thank all of you that are joining us live. We've got a two time, uh, two great speakers. Uh -oh. And uh, so uh, for those that are watching us, we're going to uh, finish out my message and then get back on uh, once again for our March mini series. So hold on, there'll be more to come on that. Tonight's focus is on uh, a topic that I have found very important in my life and has continued to challenge me, and that is showing deeper kindness. Showing a deeper kind of kindness. Now we're continuing our study of Titus 2, where it says, so that they will wisely train the young women. Now I wanna focus on this, to be self-controlled, homemakers, good-natured, kind-hearted. Heavenly Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will reveal the truth that you have for us to learn at this time and season. In Jesus' name we pray. You see, one thing I learned very young, uh, when I got married and had these kids, my husband, uh, first I was resentful because he was flying all the time as a pilot. And then when he wasn't flying and he was going to school, then I got resentful that he was always studying. Do you see a pattern? Yes. Resentful. Resentful. I could not self-control these thoughts. And sadly, because my thoughts were going all over the place, uh, anger just would, at a drop of a dime, would go off. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just anger. I would just put, uh, and just, I don't know, to try to get attention maybe, but I would uh, make a lot of noise in the house when he was studying. You know, in the kitchen, I'd be, you know, throwing the pots and pans around. And, you know, I'd be yelling at the kids. I, I mean, I was just all about making noise. So he would come out and say, what's up? Because I wanted that attention. You see, I was not this self-controlled, good-natured, kind-hearted person. I mean, I know the potential is there because the Holy Spirit produces that fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, gentleness, but it was not operating because I wasn't yielding to the Holy Spirit. I was yielding to the flesh and what I, what I wanted. I wanted attention. So tonight we're gonna focus on this deeper kind of, of kindness. And um, think about this, God's not as much interested in what we do, but how we're doing it. Okay. How are we doing life? Yes. And you know, when you think about this, you know, and you look at this Titus 2 uh, curriculum for women, and it's talking about all these different things, see how kindness is just packed right there in the middle of it. I feel like we need, just like Oreo cookie or it, I had PBJs with the grands yesterday, just like all that good stuff in the middle, I feel like kindness is that good stuff. It's, it's the flavorful part. Because you can be doing a good work, and we know from 1 Corinthians 13 when we, we go into that scripture on love. In fact, let me read some of those scriptures for you right now. 1 Corinthians 1 through 3, it says this. If I had the gift of being able to speak in other languages without learning them and could speak in every language there is in all of heaven and on earth, but didn't love others, I would only be making noise. If I had the gift of prophecy and knew all about what was going to happen in the future and knew everything about everything, but didn't have love, what good would it do? Even if I had the gift of faith so I could speak to a mountain and make it move, it would still be worth nothing at all without love. If I gave everything I had for the poor, and if I were burned alive for preaching the gospel but didn't love others, listen to this, it would be of no value whatsoever. Mm. You know, that's where I'm at in those younger years, and I'm still challenging myself to this higher level of excellence. God is, is uh, reminding me, Cindy, it's not so much about what you do, it's how you do it. We had a dear man in the organization I work for, uh, um, I was talking to someone on the phone today, and they're still celebrating all that he did in that community. He, he was just a legend, but it wasn't what he did. It was how he did it. There was such love and tenderness. And 
as believers tonight, as women, particularly that are in this room, I, I want to challenge us. How are we doing it? Are we doing it with the God kind of love? Are we like 1 Corinthians 13, just doing the stuff, but there's no love, and so it's meaning nothing, it's of no value? Tonight, I, I want to stir and awaken all of our hearts, particularly as we take time to, to mentor and, and, and just call it out in, in, a, in the younger ones and, and those that whom God sends across our path. Because if we were to rephrase this, now getting back to the day in my younger years, um, maybe it could have been said this way. If I had a house so spotless that people could eat off the kitchen floor, and there was a day that happened, and if I can whip up, now that wouldn't be me, incredibly scrumptious <laughs> meals on a tight budget, maybe a meal on a tight budget, I don't know about how scrumptious, but then if I could um, transform our home into a magazine quality showcase, uh -oh. but if I don't do it all with kindness, it's nothing. And that's what my husband challenged me. I was trying to make these meals. I mean, it was before YouTube and all that. I had this picture cookbook where I could take it step by step by pictures. <laughs> but it just, I mean, I'm telling you, we had, we had volcano eruptions in the oven all the time because I just couldn't quite figure out the teaspoons, tablespoons, and what? I mean, what does that stand for? And we had all kinds of adventures. And that fire alarm, oh my gosh, it was, it was just crazy how this, the smoke would go all over the place. But I'll tell you one thing my husband said. He said, sweetheart, I love that you're trying to do all this, but you know what a priority for me is? I want love and kindness in this home. Mm -hmm. And if you're getting stressed out about trying to cook a meal, I'd rather eat bread uh -oh. and a home that's full of love and where you're not so uptight Amen. about trying to keep everything so perfect. He said, I just, I want you to have fun. Let's just celebrate life. Now, doesn't that remind you of Proverbs where it says it's far better to be in the attic exposed to all kinds of weather than be in a home where there's strife and contention. And God challenged me that day and I realized I need to simplify my life. I need to get my priorities shifted. And he drew me to that scripture in 1 Corinthians 13. I need that God kind of love and let that be the motivation of all that I do. Because even faith works by love. And then when we have love, as the center part of our home, anything's possible. Amen. Amen. So, it reminds me, and I don't know how many Marthas there are in this room, but there's a story in the Bible about a friend of Jesus. Her name was Martha. And, and I have a lot of, I can relate to Martha. She was a firstborn, as I am. And, um, you know, with that, I do tend to be motivated with... Uh, I'm a doer. I'm an organizer. And uh, one of my sisters, if you're watching this, you'll know what I'm talking about, sis. But one of her favorite pictures of me as a child, it shows her up on my bunk bed. And I have a, just this, you know, kind of angry face. I'm just like so uptight because mm. she's in my space. And there's my sister, <laughs> this big old smile on her face with her friend on my bunk bed. I just wasn't kind of happy about stuff. <laughs> if I didn't have control, I was not happy. But here was Martha, same kind of scenario, right? Mm -hmm. The tale of these two sisters. And she lost sight of what was important. Think about these words that Jesus himself spoke in Luke 10, 41 and 42. He says, Martha, my beloved Martha, why are you upset and troubled? Pull away from all these distractions. Are they really that important? Mary has discovered, that's her sister, the one thing most important by choosing to sit at my feet. She's undistracted, and I won't take this privilege from her. You know, I learned that when we're not self-controlled, we don't have the margin. We don't have that heart of kindness. And when we are not controlling our thoughts and, and kind of keeping anything that's 
that's uh, not surrendered to the Holy Spirit that produces that love, joy, peace, patience, we are going to allow other attitudes to begin stirring within us. In fact, it's a good thing I'm teaching this tonight, and I've enjoyed kind of meditating on, on these promises, because I had a co-worker today, and I'll tell you what, she just hit me on the wrong way, oh. in the wrong way, mm. because she wants me to write, you know, do her job. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, at the staff meeting, can you do your thing, Cindy? I know you do it every week. Can you write up your portion? Well, that's, I run 13 programs, so there's a lot there. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I'm thinking, I have 13 programs I'm running. I want to be doing just that right. rather than do your job. Oh. That's what I wanted oh, yeah. to say, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was controlling my mind because I realized that's not what it's about, is it? I'm, it's about being a servant and letting, I want to be a light of Christ. So I smiled and I said, I'd be happy to. Uh oh. Now that was fake. But sometimes you gotta think it to make it, right? You gotta think it to make it. So I may have been happy to, but that was fake speaking. But you gotta, you know, you gotta start somewhere. It's the evidence of things on for. Now I well promised to get them to her tomorrow, but sometimes we are challenged by all these feelings that you know, you deserve this. Mm. You know, you're, I mean, you're you. She's her. And sometimes you don't feel motivated to yeah. be able to extend and be kind. And we're talking about that deeper kind of kindness. So in this tale of two cities, let's think about all the emotions that were coming across Martha's mind. I don't think she was controlling her thoughts and we know that just by some of the dialogue that was going on. I mean think about this. So here she is, you think she'd be excited. She's a planner like me.